Overwatch. Overwatch is a team-based multiplayer first-person shooter that involves working as a team by doing objectives against a team who tries to stop you from doing so. Absolutely revolutionary concept, never heard of it before. In each match, the players needs to choose a different character that fills a different role in order to help their team. Each got unique abilities, unique personalities, and a unique backstories. But today, we will only focus on one character in particular. Junkrat. Junkrat is an explosive loving Australian freak that is a survivor of some nuke that happened in Australia which made him insane because radiations. Or, is it? I am Grumpus McSpookus, and this, is Constipation Theory. Fuck I meant conspiracy, I meant conspir- Our team of specialized super scientists and specialized secret research recently did a further analyze of the character in recent weeks, and made a shocking discovery. Junkrat is not who we think he is. We actually know him for a very long time. But who is it, you may ask? Our research led us to believe that Junkrat is actually Crash Bandicoot. It probably fucks you up to think that a crate bashing orange animal would actually be this guy. You in fact probably think him crazy. But look, look at the similarities. The thin shape, the creepy ass face, the long nose, the massive smile, the spiky hair, those gigantic eyebrows, the love of destruction, the lack of any wares on the chest. But being the stubborn fuck that you are, it's probably isn't enough to convince you. So have a seat. It's time for a little story. Crash Bandicoot is a series that was passed down to different developers over the years. Going from Naughty Dogs, to Vicarious Visions, to Traveler's Tales, to end up with Radical Entertainment. Seen that way, it doesn't seem so bad. But when it comes to the publishers, you can probably guess the series went downhill when it went from Sony, to Activision. So after a gimmicky racing game, two mediocre beat-em-ups, and two massive piles of shit, we never heard of the poor Bangakoot ever since. After a long time without any major games, the fans in need of more adventures, and Wampa Fruit Eating we're starting more and more to think it was yet another franchise killed by Activision. But in all truth, they didn't kill it. As a matter of fact, our research lead us to think they actually tried to bring it back. In recent years, Activision was actually planning another major Crash Bandicoot redesign for a massive comeback. Everyone in the studios really liked the masterpiece they came up with so far, and further redesigned more stuff. And they redesigned, redesigned and redesigned without looking at the consequences of the usual AAA shitty reboot redesigning madness. And eventually applied their work into Crash himself without even looking, thinking it would be perfect. After hours of surgery, Crash came out of the hospital, barely recognizable. Activision finally realized their mistake, just way too late. They just didn't know what to think anymore, as there wasn't any way to go back anymore. He definitely couldn't be shown to the public in his current state, adding that he developed hostile psychopathic behavior due to all the shitty games he had to go through. His attitude was not suitable for a game for children anymore. So Activision locked him inside the basement, leaving him here until they would figure out what the fuck they would do with the monster they have created. Couple of years later, Sony came up to Activision asking to see Crash again in hope of make a new adventure with him. But Activision did not want the world to know how fucking badly they fucked up, so they replied by saying they wanted to keep him. So Sony walked back home in disappointment and made Kanak. But we don't talk about that game. Activision was getting out of ideas of what to do with their butchered bandicoot. And at some point even considered putting him down. But then, it hurt Blizzard, talking about a shooter game with a lot of colorful characters with unique abilities, unique personalities and unique backstories. Blizzard went to Activision and asked if they had an idea for a character to team up with their fat ass pig faced hooker character. They needed someone that looks weird and insane. So Crash was released from the basement, and was handled to Blizzard, as an entirely new character, to be taken care of, as they wouldn't recognize him anyway. Due to the lack of the ability of speech, Crash, now known as Junkrat, was put into therapy. 
and after years of that, and hanging around his new co-worker Roadhog, he developed the crazy Australian accent he has today. So Junkrat has a big career, in a whole new highly anticipated game, waiting for him now. However, despite his new identity and bright new future, sometimes, Junkrat seems to have some bits of memories of his past life unfolds before his very eyes. His former glory, his former friends and his former adventures. And then he stops giving a fuck because times change. So that's it for today. If you still don't believe me, it's perfectly fine. I'm just a senile old man driven by insanity because I paid $60 and still get to watch people play that fucking game I waited for two years in front of me and I'm getting salty as fuck and make that kind of bullshit.